So I remember going back out the hole and Dave Berry was running the show and he said, you're going to have to cut a leg off. And we're going, righto. So there was a doctor um, that was there. He said, you know to do a tourniquet? And we're going, yeah, I know to do a tourniquet. And you know to give an injection? I said, yes, I do. But how about you come in and do it? And, and good on him, he did. So he tourniqueted her and, and gave an injection and, you know, she says, oh, I'm free, I'm free. I said, you're not, you're not free, darling, you, you can't feel it. And then she, it dawned on her that we were going to cut her leg off and she just gripped. You're not cutting my leg off, I trust you. I'm going, I'm the last person you want to trust right at this very moment, dear. But, um, yeah, Paul and I, we found a bit of webbing and said, like, we'll give it a crack. And if we break a leg, she isn't going to know anything. And uh, Paul gave an almighty yank and uh, I heard a crack. He just said, go. So I knew she was free. I didn't know whether her foot come off or whatever. But after I got back from CTV, had something to eat, they said, oh, you've got to go on to another rescue crew for, for Pine Gold Guinness. And I went with young Josh again. They said, we think there's two people still in the area of the building that we haven't been able to um, search. So if you can imagine in an office and all the cabinetry and rubbish bins and computers, and it's all in that much space, you're just forever digging stuff, and, and, and we went through, and the aftershocks were horrendous. I was, I was absolutely shit in my pants, and, and I, I said to Josh, look, I don't know if we can find this lady, and so I, I said, you're right here by yourself, so I raced back out the hole and talked to our boss, and they go, yep, we've got her on the phone. I said, well, where is she? They said, oh, she's under a table, under a desk. So I um, crawled back through, I said, give me 10 minutes to get back in and then call on the phone so we can hopefully hear it. And so we did, and all of a sudden Josh goes, Jesus, she's right next to me. So we dug away at this desk, and nah, she's not there. And there was a big beam, and you could just see this little gap. And, and we put our fingers through, we said, is that you, Anne? And she goes, yep. Because everybody on that day, that was the number one thing, wasn't it? Everybody was trying to get hold of everybody else. Absolutely. They were walking across town to get their kids, but yep. you, didn't, you didn't have that choice. Part of my rehabilitation was trying to work out why I felt the way I felt and why you'd burst into tears and you don't know why. And it just come down to the fact that um, <laughs> I thought I'd lost my daughter because I hadn't heard from her for um, seven hours. And, and I just thought, you know, she's in exactly the same type of building. And uh, the stairwells had all, all but collapsed. And I'm just going, Christ Almighty, you know. I just want to try and save as many lives as I can because I've probably lost mine. And, and I got a phone call at four o'clock in the morning from my daughter in Australia. She said, Dad, Mel's safe. And he's going, Jesus, 